So this is, a, we call this neck effects, and it's just a, it's a guitar neck that can attach to your standard body, and it lights up as you play it, so um, wherever you play, wherever you hit the fret is where it illuminates, and this is a design that Steve and I came up with that um, basically all the strings are grounded, and all the LEDs are connected to the frets, so when you press a string to the fret, that's what lights it up. I had gotten knee surgery um, back in last August, and I had some time off for disability. And in my off time, I dreamt up this in this like drug-induced state uh, post-surgery. And then I showed the prototype to Steven and my roommate Ian, and they were both like, "This is incredible! We we have to make more." So then that's how we started building them from there. The next step above this would be to like you know, make a mold and get serious about exactly what this design is going to be, and. Um, It'll take a lot less work because we have to machine each one of these one by one right now. We both started like building projects there, and um, that's how I first found out about Tech Shop. So a couple years ago. Yeah, and it's a it's a pretty great resource. Steve had been working there, and he got to know the machines really well. And so I knew that when when I had built the first prototype, that the first person I was going to go to was going to be Steven because he has all the knowledge of all the machines around here, and he can. You just can whip these things out really quick. Yeah. So. Tech Shop overall is like, say you're going to do a uh, very early stage hardware startup. Tech Shop's a, an incredible resource because uh, it just lowers the cost to prototype and iterate. If say we had wanted to do this um, and Tech Shop didn't exist, we would have had to do one of two things: buy all the equipment ourselves, which is impossible based, you know, we can't buy a CNC machine or anything like that or we'd have to order out for the parts. And that would take, um, you know, you'd send the cat out, have to spend a lot of money because you're only making one, and then get that back, fiddle with it. And you have to iterate three or four times, and it'd be, it'd take quite a bit of time and money, but with Tech Shop, you can condense that to a matter of weeks, maybe two. We call this one 4B. Yeah, 4B. And is. we had, basically, there was a time where Steve and I had different opinions on how the design should be. And so we started splitting up designs, and he would make one version, I'd make the other, and then we took the best of both of those things. Uh, right now we have about, I'd say, half a dozen that are um, ordered, and we have about, uh, about another half a dozen that we're talking to. And so right now they go for about anywhere between three to 700, depending on how much customization they want. Um, but one of the one of the challenges that we're trying to work on is uh, being able to market it and get it out there, get the word out. The standard one is 300, and uh, that's the one, the production version that we're selling. On, on yeah. Kickstarter so, for example, we had a, um, a gentleman in Canada who wanted a Knight Rider version. So, like the show Knight Rider, he wanted it all red lights, and then he wanted to actually scan back and forth up and down the neck. And so we're working with him. Um, you know, doing a microcontroller and trying to get all that set up. Getting the word out has actually been, I mean, it's in, innately, this is kind of like one of those things that people want to show their friends. And so, we've, it's, uh, amongst like our Facebook friends and amongst like the Kickstarter network, it, it's been able to spread pretty widely. But being able to find that niche market has been uh, a little bit difficult. And so, what we've we started to do is actually contact bands directly. And so, we have um, several bands that are coming through San Francisco that are going to be using it for their shows at like the Independent or the Fillmore, Bottom of the Hill, these venues around around the area. And then we follow up with them to see if they're interested afterwards and if they can reach into their musical networks. And that's, that's sort of the route that we've been going um, with our marketing. So the machines downstairs that we use are the, the shop out mostly. It's a CNC router. And uh, that's what we use to make the, uh, the plastic uh, uh, polycarbonate fretboard here. I'm trying to think what else we use the most. Yeah, uh, so I mean, the two main things that we use are the laser cutter, yeah, the laser cutter. and the CNC. And um, Steven's come up with a way to uh, make our own custom PCB boards by there's a there's a several step process that we came up with, which is you take a copper sheet and then you spray paint it black, and then we actually raster off the paint on the sections that we want the copper to be etched away, and then we use the solution that etches that copper away. And then you can take acetone, remove the paint, and then you have your own custom PCB board. So we've been designing the boards in Illustrator and then making them ourselves. And there's a great uh, tutorial on Instructables that like outlines every step of that, uh, that process. There's people here making all kinds of crazy stuff and uh, there's you know, skills all over the place. So. Yeah, I mean the cool thing is that Steve's like pretty well versed in the whole tech shop network because he had worked for a tech shop, so he knows a lot of people that have the uh, 
you know, the know-how and how to do this kind of stuff around it. You know, 10, 10 years ago, maybe even five years ago, this wouldn't, like, not be feasible for us to try and market, in my opinion. But now that we have these, like, resources, it's like you remove all the risk and it just makes it easier to put it out there and see if anyone bites and if it's a possible, you know, avenue.